Let's hit some notes on physical and chemical changes in matter. You need to be able to recognize when a change is physical or when a change is chemical so that when you go into the laboratory, you know what to look for to make sure that you're correctly identifying these changes in matter. Physical properties are properties that you can observe without changing the identity of the substance, such as the ability to conduct electricity, which would be a property of metals, or the color or density. Melting point, boiling point, density, melting point, boiling point are all very distinctive ways of physically identifying a substance. These are published values that you can look up to help you identify a substance. Malleability and ductility, as well as conductivity, are primarily for metals and give you those physical properties that allow you to change the form of the metal without changing its identity. Index of refraction is a rather unique physical property. I'll do a demonstration of it in class, but it's the ability to absorb and reflect light based on properties of a substance. Physical properties, again, change the appearance without changing the composition of the matter. So terms like melting, dissolving, boiling, phase changes, these are all physical changes. It certainly may look different to the eye, ice and boiling water, but it's still composed of the same substance, water. So you have not made new stuff. You simply have changed the appearance of that matter. Chemical changes change the identity or the composition of the matter. And it's going to look very different. As we just said, boiling water and ice don't look the same. We know from experience that they are. So just looking different is not going to be quite enough. You actually have to create a new form of matter. And there are several things that you look at to give you those hints. Just looking different is not going to be quite good enough. Indications that you have undergone a chemical reaction or made a new form of matter is that large amounts of energy are absorbed or released. So anytime there's fire, you can be sure that you have a chemical change. You have indeed made a different form of matter, an unexpected color change, one that cannot be explained. So if you put blue food coloring into water and the water turned blue, that's not unexplained color change. So you're looking for forming a new form of matter that has a completely different ability to absorb and reflect light and therefore a different color. Anytime you have a liquid or solid state of matter and you form a gas that was not there originally, so those gases are produced, then that's also indication of a chemical change. Not where you're simply vaporizing or melting something, but actually forming a gas that was not there before. Gases are released. For example, if you took sodium carbonate and added hydrochloric acid, you would get sodium chloride, water, whoops, and carbon dioxide gas. You might not see the formation of these two, but you would definitely see the bubbles of carbon dioxide. The matter that you formed is very different from what you started with. The other form of a precipitate, excuse me, the other sign of a chemical reaction is the formation of a precipitate, a solid that was not there before that now is produced from the solution. So pouring two liquids together and seeing the formation of a solid would indicate that you made new material, new substances with different properties and different chemical formulas, a chemical change. So let's look at this picture and determine if we took this piece of metal and dropped it into this blue liquid, and this is what we see occurring as the reaction proceeds. So one way you can see a gas forming is by these vapors. The other way you can see a gas forming is bubbles. 
So the formation of a gas okay, leads us to believe this was a chemical change. Not knowing what this looked like before we mixed two things together, we can't really say for sure this certainly does look like a precipitate, abbreviated PPT, if we poured two clear liquids together and this white solid was formed, the precipitate is a sign of that chemical change. Chromatography, which you may have done before in biology to separate some of your uh, chlorophylls and xanthophylls. Here we're separating a mixture of dyes. Um, the mixture of dyes is separated into the yellow, red, and blue dye. The dyes were all there to start with. There is no change in their identity. They were physically mixed before. Now they're physically separated. That's a physical change. All chromatography is a physical separation of matter. Here, if we had a liquid and dropped a solid into it, and now we see this evidence, this would lead us to believe a chemical change. Why is that? Because this is the formation of a gas that cannot be explained by the presence of solid and liquid. So this gas is a new substance. The chemical reaction for this would be calcium plus water. So water was the liquid, calcium is the solid. Makes calcium hydroxide, which you cannot see. That's dissolved in solution. And these bubbles are hydrogen gas. So the hydrogen gas is the only evidence that we see that we have done this chemical reaction. Remember, we're looking for signs that we will see that lead us to understand the change. Later, you'll understand the chemistry behind it. Right now, you're not expected to be able to write a balanced equation and explain the chemistry. Just look for those signs of chemical change. Here, heating what appears to be water would lead us to believe we have gone from liquid water to gaseous water. We have stayed the same. We have changed the physical state, so that's a physical change. Anytime you filter out a solid from a liquid, so here's sand and water, the separation of this certainly requires no chemistry. There's simply a change. Uh, that we use the different densities between the liquid and the solid and the different solubilities that allow us to separate the sand from the water, a physical separation. Fire, anytime there's fire, anytime you produce large amounts of heat energy, you are looking at a chemical change. Okay? That chemistry comes from the wood, so let's say that's some carbon-hydrogen compound, XY, plus O2 in the air gives us CO2 and water, both of which are vaporized by the heat, okay, and this heat, which lets us know a chemical change did occur. The matter that we formed is not what we started with. The evidence is that heat. We cannot see the other two products, so we have to rely on the fact that that fire tells us that the energy of this was much higher than the energy of those products, and the rest of that energy went out into the universe. Let's watch this video, see if you can determine the change. What type of reaction do you believe this to be, and how would you support your answer? Let's look at another video.
process of going from a solid to a gas is a rather unique process. Do you believe this to be a physical or chemical change? And what support do you have for your answer? This is the element gallium. It has quite a unique property as you watch the change that's taking place. Based on what you see occurring, do you believe this to be a chemical change in matter or a physical change in matter? And based on what you see, what evidence do you have to support that? Remember, your evidence for chemical change is very specific. If you're not sure, go back and look at the beginning of the podcast. There are four things you're specifically looking for. So let's look at this reaction. Piece of aluminum and elemental bromine Sometimes you have to be patient. Based on what you see, it should be pretty clear that this is chemical change. What evidence would you tell me supports my conclusion that this is indeed a chemical change? If we were to write the chemical reaction for this, we would have aluminum metal and bromine gas. This would be a synthesis reaction forming aluminum bromide which is ALBR3. So notice they don't just get glued together. We then would have to do some balancing of this equation to complete the chemistry. So to go from simply telling me whether something is physical or chemical to this, it's going to take us a couple of chapters at least. Let's look at another demonstration. Here we're heating a test tube full of sodium thiosulfate. Pouring it into a crystallizing dish and adding a seed crystal. Make your observations and determine physical or chemical change based on what you see alone. Is that a physical change, a chemical change, and again support your answer. Remember, all burning is chemical. This video shows some of the formation of the new forms of matter that you often don't think about when you're burning. You can see the match head changes as the energy is released and you're forming different forms of matter. There's sulfur on the match head that is also involved in the chemical reaction that occurs. But anytime you've got fire, You've got a chemical reaction. So go back. If you're not sure on how you would classify physical and chemical changes, go back, do a review, answer the questions, and we'll be going into lab to see if you can figure it out when you're actually doing physical and chemical changes in matter yourself.